Isosceles and equilateral triangles, section 4.8, last section of the chapter. Okay, today we're going to talk about specific properties of these two things. Now, really, for the most part, this is a lot of review of sections 4.1 and 4.2. Okay, so very, very similar to things we did in sections 4.1 and 4.2. First thing we're going to talk about today is the isosceles triangle theorem and then the converse of isosceles triangle theorem. And again, anytime you see converse, it just means the same thing, opposite, kind of both ways, going both ways here. Isosceles triangle theorem says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite the sides are congruent. For example, if I know these two sides to be congruent, the angles opposite of those two sides are also congruent. Okay, that is a true for isosceles triangles. That is true every time. When sides are congruent, the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. Now the converse says the other way. If I know the angles are congruent, that means then that the sides are congruent. Okay, so that's all it's saying. Again, isosceles triangle theorem, then the converse is isosceles triangle theorem. Basically, two saying the same thing. If the sides are congruent, the angles are congruent. If the angles are congruent, the sides are congruent. Must know that. All right, so today we're going to do a bunch of different things solving for isosceles triangles. Well, I have an isosceles triangle here, and I'm given two angle measures. What can I do with those two angle measures to solve for x, Trevor? Make them equal. Make them equal. And I can set them equal to each other because they are the angles that are opposite of the isosceles triangle part. Okay, so I set them equal to each other, I solve for x, plug x back in, and I can find both angles. Yes, sir. I got seven. What? I got seven. Oh, I got you. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you. Alright, so here we go looking at some problems here. Now, we do have to recall a lot of information on triangles. For instance, sometimes today students are forgetting some information. For example, what is a triangle always add up to? 180 degrees. The interior angles will always add up to 180 degrees. So for instance here, what type of triangle do I have here, Anna? I have A or N. What type of triangle is this? That's an isosceles triangle. So what do I know about angles A and angle C then, Anna? They are congruent. Now, if I wanted to give them, do I want to find their angles? Yes. I could give them an arbitrary value of X if I wanted to. And I could solve. Okay, because I need to solve for the missing angle. I could say, hey, that's angle X. I know they both have to be the same, so they're both X. Now I realize, what does a triangle add up to, Caitlin? So what do these three parts add up to, Caitlin? So 78 plus x plus x equals 180. And I can solve for that missing value. So subtract 78. 2x equals... Why did you put 72? I did, did I say so what? Oh, I did put 78. Thank you. 78. So I get 2x equals 102. What would be my next step here, Tom? And I get x to be 51 degrees. Now, that's kind of the longer way to do it. When you get really good at this, what's kind of the shortcut way? Subtract and divide by 2. Does everybody kind of see that? Now, that's really what we did. I just kind of wrote it all out. But yeah, if you subtract by this angle and then divide by 2, you get both of the other angles. That's kind of the shortcut way. Okay, that's, yeah, it really is. So number 2 here. I'm given this is 86 degrees. What type of triangle do I have here, Hannah? I have a, or N? Isosceles triangle. So my opposite angles are congruent. Okay. So to find the angles there, I would say, I could say X and X. So x plus x plus 86 equals 180. Subtract 86. 2x equals 94. Divide by 2. 
I know that each angle, specifically angle Q, has to be what, Drew? Hi, Tina. What do you got? No. No, not. Yes. Just kidding. Yes. It's yes. It's right. It's 47 degrees. 94 divided by 2, Drew, is 47 degrees. You with me now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about number 3 here? I'm given two angles. They both come out to be x, though. I'm given h is 8x and j is 6x plus 18. Well, what can I do to solve for x this time? Hmm, I don't have that third angle. Ah, I can set them equal to each other. How do I know I can set them equal to each other, Tom? Because they are both congruent. If you look, they are the angles that are both opposite of my congruent sides. So 8x <coughs> equals 6x plus 18. I now solve for x. So I subtract 6x. 2x equals 18. Keegan, what does x equal then? Am I done, Keegan? Because what do I have to do with that? Substitute back in. 8 times 9 gets me an angle. That is what, Keegan? 72 degrees. Nice job, sir. All right, take a couple seconds. Try number 4 on your own. Same idea. All right, Tyler, what do you get x to equal? Huh? Thanks, Mots. Nice job, sir. X does equal 30. And then you plug that back in, and I get angle M comes out to be what, Gabe? 60 degrees. Nice job, sir. Again, recognize, isosceles triangle, my two angles on my base there have to be congruent, so I set them equal to each other, solve for X. All right, next part here. We're going to talk about equilateral triangles. Now, we talked about this, again, in section 4, 1, and 4, 2. But the equilateral triangle corollary states that if a triangle is equilateral, it is also equiangular. And the same is true in the reverse. If the triangle is equiangular, then it's equilateral. <laughs> kind of makes sense, right? If all the angles are the same, all the sides have to be the same. If all the sides are the same, all the angles have to be the same. Makes sense, okay? So that's what that says. Now. What it's going to show us here in some problems is it's just going to give me one angle. Now, you can't read it there on this area. It says 7x plus 4. But it gives me just that angle is 7x plus 4. If I wanted to solve for x, what do I set that angle equal to? Set equal to what next? Y60. Yeah. Whenever you have an equilateral triangle or an equiangular triangle, either way, all of the angles will always be 60 degrees, every single time. It will not be 60 and a half, won't be, you know, 60 and one third, it's always 60 exact. Always 60 exact. All right, so anytime I work that out and I have an equilateral triangle, I'm gonna set it equal to 60. Yes, sir. Hey, back, Blackboard's back up running. Feel free to pull it up. All right, so let's look at number five here. I am given triangle QSR or QRS. Probably go QRS. That's more alphabetical, huh, Caitlin? Uh, sure. That's not working. So I'm given R is 5N. I want to solve for N here. What am I going to do right there to solve for N, Bryce? Yeah, 5N equals 60. And then I solve for N. What do I need to do to solve for N, Kay? Sixty divided by five, I get n to equal what k? Nice job. And there's my answer. Now, if you notice so far, a lot of geometry we're reviewing a lot of the algebra concepts. The only difference here is you kind of have to know some different geometry properties. So again, understanding and picking up on the geometry properties. For example, equilateral triangle. All the sides are the same. All the angles are the same. All the angles are sixty. Those are the parts that geometry is adding in here that you need to recognize. Same thing on number six here. I have E is equal to 2X minus 6. If I need to solve for X, what do I need to do, Jessica? Nice job. I'm going to set it equal to 60. So 2X minus 6 equals 60. 
And then I solve for x. So to solve for x, what do I need to do first? Mots? No, sir. I need to actually do the opposite, which is? Add 6, thank you. I get 2x equals 66. Divide both sides by what, Ryan? And I get x to be? 33. Nice job, sir. This is really easy. It's good. I'm glad you feel that way. Number 7. What type of triangle do I have on number 7, Jack? That is in? How do we know it's equilateral? Because it's actually in? What do they show me it is? Huh? So what's that mean though? If all the angles are the same. Equiangular. Equiangular. Now because it's equiangular, I do agree it is equilateral. Nice. So I need to solve for R here. So Jack, what do I want to do to solve for R? Nice job. Because it's equilateral. I know the sides are all the same. So 9R equals 5R plus 8. Yes, sir. So like equal angular and isosceles, you said like 70 from each other? The angle um, depends which angles you want to look for. Isosceles now recognize there's one angle that does not necessarily have to be the same. So there's one slight difference there. Equilateral, yes. Always semi equal each other. Again, anytime if you're given like congruent parts there, like all these would be congruent, definitely set them equal to each other. <coughs> okay. So I solve for R there. What do I get R to be Anna? R equals 2. Am I done, Anna? No, what do I want to do with that 2? Plug it back in, I get what, Anna? Nice job. Good work. All right, take a couple seconds. Try number 8 on your own. Same idea. All right, Kendrick, what'd you get Y to equal? Um, y equals 3. Nice job, sir. And then what do you have to do with that 3? Plug, Plug it back in, and you get the side length to be? 13. 13. All right, moment of truth. You ready? That is, MN is 13. What is LN going to be? Let's go with Tyler. How do we know that? Because it is? Nice job. Good work, sir. You guys understand equilateral triangles. Nice. All right, here we go. Tough ones. Okay. I want you to take a couple minutes here. Try these four out. They are a little bit tougher. I will tell you right now, number 11 is probably the toughest. <coughs> this is a good review problem of Algebra 1. You can do this. After probably showing you, you'll probably be like, oh yeah, I remember doing that in Algebra 1 a little bit. No. Okay. Try these four. Take a couple seconds here. All right, number nine. What's the key to number nine, Kendrick? Um, so the 90 degrees and then you divide the, two sides. So divide that by two and angle X is? 45 degrees, nice job. Now number 10, a lot of you are doing good work. First of all, number 10 is isosceles triangle. I want BC, so I want this side right here. That is the hypotenuse. I would do Pythagorean theorem and I get what, Peyton? Square root of two. Square root of two, nice job, sir. Number 12, I'm gonna do number 11 last. Number 12, what is the key to a problem on number 12, Gabe? Vertical angles, recognize it. You have to get very good at recognizing vertical angles in geometry. That is something that will constantly come up and come up and come up. So I know that's 28. My other two now have to be the same. The other two are actually what then, Gabe? 78. Is it 78? 76, isn't it? So I thought it was 76, right? Yeah, 78 was pretty good. 76 degrees, though. Okay, all right. Now, I'm going to erase to make some room here. I'm going to erase to make some room. Okay, number 11. What do I have to do with these two parts? Set them equal to each other. So I get n squared equals 3n plus 18. Now, I am dealing with a quadratic. So I need to solve for the quadratic. In order to solve for a quadratic, I set it equal to 0. So I subtract 3n, okay? So I subtract 3n and subtract 18 on both sides, giving me n squared minus 3n minus 18 equals 0. 
Now here, I look to factor it, which is just like the opposite of foiling. I remember doing that. So what multiplies to get negative 18 adds to get negative 3. So when I think about it here, listen, I'm looking for what multiplies to get negative 18, adds to get negative 3, I get x minus 6, x plus 3 equals 0. Again, because it was negative 6 and a positive 3, multiplies to get negative 18, adds to get 6, or sorry, I have n in there, don't I? Or x, I have n's. So really, then I cover it up, n equals then 6 or negative 3, depending on how you look at that. Guess 6 minus 6 would be 0, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. I plug both of those in, and I get answers of either 36 or 9. There are two possible answers there. And again, this comes back from remembering how to factor. And Martina's like, yes, I do remember doing this. I think See? I'm going to try and make three hours. <laughs> All right. I'm really excited because I thought the next slide was homework. Good stuff. Yay. Um, I feel like we're doing pretty good with this stuff. So you're skipping it. Oh, good. Here is your assignment. I'll give you a chance to get started on it today.